Hi everyone, um, and welcome back to our tutorial series on creating a 2D um, side scroller um, in Unreal Engine 4. And today uh, we've got quite a fun session today. I think this is maybe something someone might be looking for um, is to be able to make moving platforms um, by doing them as a blueprint. So we're not actually going to use matinees. Um, the next session will be on matinees if anyone wants to know how to do them with matinees. Um, but the first one we're going to do um, is create them by using blueprints. I find this the easiest way of creating moving platforms. Um, obviously I come from a coding background so it does make my life a little bit more easier. Um, and plus also I'm able to move these platforms around to wherever I like um, and they will still work in any location I place them um, they'll work exactly how I want them to. Whereas if it was a matinee um, it'll only work in that certain location. So um, I find this probably uh, the easiest way, um, and we can use this with different things which we'll look at um, in further tutorials. Um, but I think personally, um, creating moving platforms in blueprints is 100 times more easier um, than trying to do them in matinees. So let's get started. Um, so we're just going to swap over onto our um, current view. So this is where we ended up in our last session, uh, where we changed. As some of the character movement properties um, to make sure that he doesn't do some really crazy things um, inside the game. So we made him more into um, a character that um, just doesn't jump around as often as we want him to, so we got more control um, on how we want to run the character um, with inside the game that we're creating. But what we're going to create in this session, as I said, is we're going to create um, a moving platform um, for this session. But what we need to do is we actually need to no, actually, no, we're not going to go into Photoshop and make a platform. We'll just use one of the sprites that we have got. But what you could do is you could actually make a platform um, inside the sprite sheet, extract it out, um, and then you could use that if you wanted to. But we're just going to use one of these grass blocks that we've got um, that we currently have for our scene. So we're actually going to just use uh, probably uh, this one. So we'll probably use this sprite um, to, uh, for, our, for our blueprint, really, just for the tutorial. So what we need to do is, we have got a folder here for sprites. Um, for this session, we're actually going to create um, a new folder. Um, and that folder is actually going to be called, um, we're going to call this, probably the easiest thing to call it would be blueprints. So put BP um, for blueprints, and it'll automatically go blue. Uh, it shouldn't really, but I think it's because I already had a folder called BP. Um, it's automatically changed its color to blue. Um, if you do want to change your color, remember you go to set color. Um, and you can assign a color um, to whatever you're working with. Now, I like colors. It just makes my work a little bit more easier, um, and I can work. I can just see what I'm what, what I'm doing um, inside Unreal. It makes my life a little bit more easier. So, what we're going to do, very simple, um, is we're going to create a new blueprint class because uh, this is what we're going to need. We're going to need a, a class to to work off. Um, and the class we're going to make is going to be an actor because remember, an actor um, is basically just an object that will be inside the world. Um, and we can manipulate that. Uh, pawns and characters and stuff we'll look at, uh, but for now we just want an actor to be placed inside the game, um, and we want it to do something inside the game. So uh, we need to go into that that section. So we're going to create an actor, and we're going to call this um, let's call this platform. Um, so platform Z. So this is going to go up and down. So we're going to make this platform go up and down. Um, and then I'll show you also how to make a platform that goes left and right. So it's exactly the same way, but we just change um, a few properties, really. Um, nothing too serious, but we can change a few. So if we open up um, the platform, we can see that we get the generic default scene route, which is this here. Um, what I'm going to add, I'm going to add a component. And what's quite nice is we can add a sprite. So I'm going to add a sprite, so a paper sprite here. And the sprite I'm going to load in uh, to use in this tutorial is going to be that floor that we had. Um, so where is it? Here we are. This one here. So we're going to use this sprite. Okay. Um, I'm just going to click and drag it over the default scene route so I get rid of that little sphere. Um, that really annoys me. So um, I just drag it on top of that um, to get rid of it. And what I'm actually going to do is, if I had to save this now, so just save and compile, it does, it's not going to do anything yet. I kind of want to see what it's going to look like in my game. So if I just drag the blueprint on, I can see it's yay big. So if I have a look at my perspective, um, 
Yeah, it's just pretty much the same size, so it's going to be 32 by 32. That's fine. Um, we can use that for now. I mean, you could scale it if you wanted to. That's okay. Um, it's entirely up to you if you wanted to scale it. Very simply, just go into the scale tool here and then drop it down value. So if you want to make it smaller, obviously you make it um, lower than one. Um, but if you wanted to make it bigger, then obviously increase the scale and um, you could change the scale that way. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, there's no need to change anything in regards to that. But what's really important to us for this session is we're going to tinker a lot in this event graph. Okay. Now what I normally do is I just get rid of all these, these nodes because I um, don't really need them. Right, so we're just going to get rid of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with an event, begin play. And this is basically going to say on the game plane, we're going to do something because uh, obviously we need to make it do something. Okay. And what we're actually going to do is we actually need to work out first where the actual, uh, the actual platform is inside the game. Okay. So we are going to make a variable. Okay. So we are going to make a variable for this one. And we're going to call it, so we're going to choose a variable. And we're going to change it to a vector because we want to find out its location. So vectors are probably the best for locations. Um, and we're going to call the variable location. Um, call location of um, location of platform. Okay, so we can call it location of platform. And what we want to do is we first want to find out where the location is when it begins play. So we're going to drag it off. Okay, and we're going to say set. Okay, so we're going to set the location to exactly where that platform is. And the idea behind that is then we need to find out exactly where it is. So we need to find out the location um, of the actor. And we just simply right click and we're going to type in get actor location. Okay, so we're going to get the actor's location. And we're just going to plug the return value into our set value. So we're basically just setting saying, um, okay, well, when we play, set the location of where the actor is currently, okay? And our next step, what we can do, is we actually going to create... Um, actually, no, let's make a delay. Um, let's make a delay. It might be a little bit more easier um, for you guys that are watching. So let's make a delay. So this is when um, it would trigger, so how long it will take until it starts. And let's just promote this to a variable. And now the reason I'm doing this is because um, the user will be able to change. So you would be able to change where you want um, the platforms to start um, in the game. So let's just name this. Let's give it a crazy name. So um, start platform, I suppose. That will work. And obviously make it um, global so we can change that. So we can change the variable itself. And just compile that so we know there's no errors. And when it's completed, when it's completed, we want to, again, make another variable. So we're going to make another variable. And we'll call this uh, start. Yeah, let's just call it start. Probably the easiest thing to call it. And we're actually going to change this to a Boolean. So we're actually going to check if it's true or false um, to see if it is actually active and it's in its right location. So we're actually going to set this. Okay, so when everything's correct and it's in the right location, we want to make sure that the start is on. Okay, so um, where the location of the platform is, uh, we're going to say, okay, well, when that's done, um, set the thing to start. Um, and that will then start our animation of the platform. So what I normally do is I normally comment this out. So you select it all and comment. And we can say, um, start trigger for platform. Okay, very easy. Um, not very difficult at all. So our next step. Um, is to actually make it move. Um, and that's very easy to do. It's not very complex. And what we're going to do is we're going to, like we had an event being, begin play, we're actually going to have a, another event, but this is going to be called an event tick. And basically an event tick is a tick that happens in the world um, every, I think it's every millisecond, I think, if I'm correct. I'm, uh, if someone can correct me on that, but I think it's, it, it, it's very quick. Uh, it, it's continuous as well, so just keep on going and going and going and going. What we want to do is we want to find out if it has started. Okay, so we are going to find out if it does start. So we're going to get that. Um, so we're going to find out if it does start. And if you could imagine, we're going to um, add a branch. We're actually going to check if it has started. So we can drag off this node, and we're going to call a branch. So this is basically a true or false statement. And we're going to check to see if it has started. 
So if um, the look the platform's in the right location, um, and we've got a delay of 0.2 um, of a delay there, and then once that's completed the delay, it will then start the event. And what we'd like, um, I'm actually going to put, now you don't need this if you don't want, but I'm actually going to put a sequence because I might want to do some more later on. Um, yeah, I like doing crazy things with um, with blueprints, but um, for now, we're just going to work with the, the zero node for now. Um, but yeah, we... I, I might add some more um, later on during this tour because I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing further along, maybe lesson 20, lesson 30. Um, there might be some other things I want to add to the blueprint just to um, update it a little bit more um, for people that are watching. So currently it's saying, okay, so the platform is ready. Um, when it's ready, let's do the sequence. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag this off onto a timeline. Now, if you're not too sure what a timeline is, it's basically um, something we could add inside Unreal, which will set a timeline for what we want the object to do or, or move in this instance and how we want it to move in the area that we're working with. And to edit a timeline, I should make this bigger. I'm so sorry, guys, that I'm not making this bigger. I'm sorry. And to edit the timeline, very simple. We just double click on this timeline. So you just double click on it. And then we've got the view. Um, of the timeline itself. Okay, now I'm not going to go crazy into timelines because that's not this tutorial. The idea is to get the timeline moving um, and our platforms moving, which um, is part of the tutorial. And obviously, I've got to be very wary about time. And what we're actually going to do to make it move is we need to add what is called a vector track. Okay, I mean, depending on how you feel comfortable, I like vectors. You could use float tracks if you like. Um, but I like using vector tracks. Um, so I'm going to add a vector track. And what we have here is a track of time for our object or our actor. Okay. And basically what we have on this horizontal line is the time. All right. So how long it takes. Now it's currently set to five. All right. Um, depending on how quick you want your animations to go, um, depends on um, how long you want it to run for. Uh, it all depends on, on preference and how quick you want your platforms to move um, and etc. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it at 5 because um, there's no need to change it, to be honest. But what I will be doing is because I'm working on the Z axes, I'm going to lock X, I'm going to lock Y, and I only want to use Z. This is extremely important because you can make some mistakes along the line and we don't want, to ha want that to happen in the tutorial. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, we want our platform to start at a zero state. So nothing. So it's not moving at all. It's just going to stay where it is. And to do that, we're going to add a key. So you just right click on the line, on the blue line, and we're going to add a key to the Z. And as you can see, we've got some properties here. We've got time and value. What we want to do is start on zero because obviously zero seconds. We want to start there. And we want the value to be zero, so a zero state, so just where it is normally. Okay, so um, at its beginning point. And then what we might want to do is how far do we actually want to move this platform? Now, this is going to work in units. Okay, so units in Unreal depends on, you know, how you snap to the grid. It snaps so many units. We want to do the same for our platform. So we want to move it up and down so many units. And to do that, we're going to find a sweet spot. So the middle, um, so 2.5, we can change this manually. So add a key to Z. Let's just change that manually to 2.5 and set that to a value of how far we want it to go on the Z axis. So how far do we want it to go up? So let's just do a small value for now. So let's do 50 and let's just hope that that works. You're going to see it's going to shoot right up here. Um, if you want to, you can click on this button and it'll fit it all together. And we then want it to go back to its normal state. So back to zero. So we're going to right click on our line again add a key to the Z, and we're going to change the time to 5 seconds because that's how long our time is, and we're going to change the value to 0. So we're saying, okay, we're going to start at 0, we're going to push the value up to 50, so we're going to go up 50 on the Z, and then we're going to go back to a, a state of 0. And one last step, once that's completed, we're just going to make sure it goes on a loop. So it's going to keep going and going and going and going, and it's not going to stop. Once that's completed, very easy. Let's just compile and save that. And let's go back to our event graph. 
That is it, chaps. That that's all. That that's all you have to do. You just set the timeline, how far you want it to go, and that's it. But there is a few bits of pieces that we need to do with inside our timeline. Now, remember, I said to you, we've got the location, the beginning location of where the actual object is. So we actually need to get that location to where it currently is, where it currently is, okay? And we're actually going to plus on this. So you're going to drag off the pin, press plus, and it's going to be a vector plus vector. Okay, now this is definitely in the wrong slot. It should not be in that one. It should be in the bottom slot. And um, our track that we created, uh, I forgot to name it, apologies. Um, so the track that we did create is known as new track zero. So if we go back, um, new track zero. And we can actually attach that to there. So we're basically saying where the location of the object is plus the value um, of how far my platform's going to go. However, I need something coming off here. Now, remember, we are working with an actor. Okay, so we can, if we drag off this, we can now set the actor location. Okay, so we're going to set the actor location. And basically what this is saying is, okay, we are doing this timeline and we're going to move the location dependent on this timeline. Okay, and all we have to do is plug this pin into there. To its new location and that is it that's all we need to make the animation run where the current location is of the um, object we're going to add the new track location and then that's going to update the new actors location so we have to save that um, if I play nothing's going to happen because I don't have my blueprint currently on my scene but if I happen to um, put my blueprint in so remember we called it plat Z um, we can go into our front view, so go to front view, and let's just drag that onto the scene. So we can see if we go back to perspective, um, he's quite happy just sitting here on the scene like so. Okay. Now if I play, you'll notice that the platform now is moving on that timeline that I associated for um, its location. Now you can see it's on a on a five second schedule, and it's going to go up, down, up, down, depending on how far. I asked it to go on the timeline. But what's really nice about this blueprint is I can actually place these wherever I like. So if I want to keep placing more and more and more, um, I can quite simply just drag my blueprint and place it there. Now you can see I've now got two moving platforms, um, which means makes our life a lot more easier when it comes to, oh my goodness, I just fell through the world. Terrible at playing games. I make them, but can't play them. It goes hand in hand. Um, so you can see that the collision sort of gets ignored. I mean, we can fix all those issues and etc. But you can see that the platform is working on the Z axis. Now, just to give you a bit of a hint, let's say, for example, you wanted to make one on the Z axis. Um, you do the same process, but except in the timeline. So if we go back into our blueprint. So on the timeline, instead of going on the Z axis, we can lock um, Y and Z and then just go on the X axis and just do the same thing again. And you'll have a platform that then moves left to right. So hopefully um, that made a little bit of sense about how we create these moving platforms by using blueprints. I will be making another video on um, creating moving platforms by using matinees, um, which is, I find a lot more difficult compared to that because once you've got that set, you can place that um, wherever you like. But I will make another one with matinees. Um, and I hope you really enjoyed that session. I hope you do like or subscribe. Um, and I hope to see you in our next session where we're going to look at creating a moving platform by using a matinee. Thank you very much. I'm Wayne. Again, very nice to take you for the session. I'll see you again in the next episode. Goodbye.